It's crazy that players I grew up watching now have kids who are playing college football. There are a ton of NFL players who have sons playing the game right now, but there is none having more of an impact than Marvin Harrison Jr. His dad was obviously an NFL legend, but Marvin is becoming a college football legend, becoming a generational talent, and could be a top three pick in next year's NFL Draft. Everyone always knew he was going to be good, but no one thought he'd be this good this quick. In today's video, I want to go through the rise of Marvin Harrison Jr., talk about his crazy story to get here, how his Ohio State career has gone so far, and my expectations for him next. But before we get started, quickly be sure to leave a like if you want to support today's video, subscribe if you're new and love college football content, and let me know what player, team, topic, or situation I could cover next. Now, let's get started and talk about the insane rise of Marvin Harrison Jr. I'm assuming you guys know who Marvin Harrison is, right? He was a college football superstar and went on to have a highly decorated career at the Colts. I think highly decorated is an understatement as he is now a Hall of Famer and you could argue is one of the better receivers in NFL history. Like father, like son, Marvin Harrison Jr. took a liking to the game. Combining his dad's success with his extremely hardworking mom, it was the perfect formula for MH3 to become the superstar he is now. He pointed to his mom getting up at 4.30 a.m. every day to work and his dad's success as focal points growing up. Harrison Jr. wanted to become a big star, but in order to do that, he'd have to block out the noise and live up to the insane hype. When he got to high school, he originally played football for LaSalle College, but him and his family decided that a transfer would be the best move for him, so he went to a local powerhouse school instead. Harrison Jr. would arrive at St. Joseph's Prep in Philadelphia with high expectations, but it wasn't the perfect transition as he didn't have daunting size and he was unproven. His head coach said, quote, when he first got here, it was a little bit of a struggle for him. Getting into the flow, being in a different place and learning how we do things here at a practice, academic and social standpoint and all those different things were tough for him. Eventually his insane athleticism and determination would pay off though as he would blow up alongside his quarterback, Kyle McCord. McCord eventually became a five-star quarterback, and the two would develop a very special connection while at St. Joe's. The school was a very big time and prestigious school in the area, and the two would become local legends. But when the world got shut down, it forced football players and everyone to get creative. They did not want to be left behind, so they would sneak onto the football field at 6 a.m. to practice with each other, and they would never complain because that was just part of being great, and they wanted to play at the highest possible level. Because of many factors, Harrison Jr. would become a big time recruit and earned his offer to Ohio State as only a sophomore. Brian Hartline was extremely impressed with him and obviously wanted him to become a Buckeye. A big reason for that was because Harrison was a tremendous blocker. During the Urban Meyer era, Meyer was known to go after receivers who loved the block and never took a play off. It was something that the OSU staff would always look into and his high school coach said, quote, if that is what Ohio State is looking for, they're going to get somebody who can catch the ball, who can block, and when the ball is not going to him, is not going to take a play off. He's not a prima donna, and he's not a diva. So we now know how the story goes. Marvin Harrison III gets better and better, and ended up following his high school quarterback Kyle McCord to Ohio State. Harrison committed to Ohio State over the likes of LSU, Michigan, Penn State, Texas A&M, and a ton of other offers. He became the fifth member of the class of 2021, and Ohio State fans were pumped for good reason. But why Ohio State? Well, it seems like a lot of these receivers, the number one factor seems to be Brian Hartline. Harrison said, quote, he knows what he's talking about. He also has a different skill perspective, even outside of football. He helps you mentally, and he's a coach that can tell you how to catch the ball or run a route, but can also tell you how to do things mentally and advance your game that way too. That's what gets a lot of people. So yeah, Hartline was obviously a great Ohio State receiver, spent some time in the NFL, and seems to be very relatable to a lot of younger recruits and younger players. It's honestly not talked about enough how good of a coach Brian Hartline is, but Hartline secured a stud. Harrison would produce on the field during his career, as in total, he caught 144 passes for 2,625 yards and 37 touchdowns. He also helped St. Joseph's win three straight 6A state championships, and the guy left as a winner. He was insane, and 24-7 sports scouts agreed. They listed him as a four-star recruit, the number 14 wide receiver, and the 97th best player in the class of 2021. So, how would MH3 do at Ohio State? Well, let's take a look. When Marvin arrived at Ohio State, there was going to be a ton of hype. Luckily for him, there'd be plenty of guys to show him the ropes. Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, and Jackson Smith and Jigba all became superstars in 2021, and they would guide the young Harrison and set the tone for how his career would need to go and the level of play he would need to play at. Last season, he was stuck behind all of them, but he'd still get a couple of opportunities to play. 
Last year, he would appear in three regular season games, catching a combined five passes for 68 yards in wins over Akron, Indiana, and Nebraska. He didn't play a whole lot, but he'd get his opportunity in the Rose Bowl. After Ohio State would miss out on the college football playoff, they'd be matched up with the scorching hot number 11 Utah Utes. This game was one of the best bowl games in recent memory, as Ohio State would win 48-45 in a classic, and Marvin Harrison went off. Because both Olave and Wilson had opted out, we got a chance to see the potential Harrison had. He caught six passes for 71 yards and three touchdowns, which was one of the best performances for an Ohio State freshman ever, and showed that he was going to be a problem in 2022. Going into his sophomore year, he was named to Bruce Feldman's freak list and debuted at number two. Harrison, though, was not too concerned about it. He said, quote, with someone like me, they say a lot of those things are genetics, but I had to put a lot of work into running as fast as I can, changing directions, and being as strong as I am. I'm honored to be appearing on this list, but this game is about skill and technique, and athleticism is only going to get you so far. So as we went into the 2022 season, everyone was talking about JSN and the potential of Marvin Harrison, but I don't think anyone expected him to have the kind of season he's having right now. With Njigba struggling with injury all year, Harrison has become the go-to guy. He had five catches for 56 yards and a win over number five Notre Dame, and then had an insane seven catches for 184 yards and three touchdowns against Arkansas State. That is still to this date his best game of his career, and it showed that he was going to be a problem. The following week, he catched six passes for 102 yards and two scores against Toledo, and then would help them in a dominating win over Wisconsin. He'd catch a touchdown against Rutgers before he would torch Michigan State's defense, for seven catches, 131 yards, in another three-score game. This was now his third game of having three touchdowns, and Marvin Harrison was showing that he was pretty much unguardable. Against Iowa, he catched seven passes for 62 yards and a touchdown, and that's actually quite impressive with how good Iowa's defense typically is. From there, he'd have one of the best performances of the year so far, as he had a season-high 10 catches and 185 yards in a win over number 13 Penn State. He made a couple of crucial plays and continued that on with five catches for 51 yards against Northwestern. He once again went off against Indiana, catching seven passes for 135 yards and a touchdown, had five catches and a narrow victory over Maryland, and then did his best in the game against Michigan. While they ended up losing to the Wolverines, Harrison caught seven passes for 120 yards and a score. As I said, they'd ultimately lose, and this was absolutely heartbreaking, but I guess it didn't matter, as Ohio State would still get to the playoff, and Harrison would have his chance to get a national title ring. Against number one Georgia, Harrison once again went off. He had five catches for 106 yards and two touchdowns, but unfortunately got cheap shotted and knocked out of the game due to injury. This was a major blow for Ohio State and one of the most controversial no calls of all time. In my opinion, there definitely should have been a flag there and I think Harrison Jr. got screwed. Either way, they still had a chance to win, but ended up floundering on defense and missed a really long field goal. For the season, Harrison finished with 77 catches for 1,263 yards and 14 touchdowns. Many believed he was the best wide receiver in all of college football, and because of that, he was named a unanimous All-American, was a first-team All-Big Ten selection, and now is a projected top five pick in the 2024 NFL Draft. Right now, he is by far the number one wide receiver option for next year's draft. Some are saying he could be better than his dad. Many are saying he's already an NFL franchise player and could be the best Ohio State wide receiver ever. How will this season go? Will he put up even more insane stats or will he have tough luck like Jackson Smith and Jigba did? People were saying these same sort of things about JSN last year, but as we know, he struggled with injury. The Buckeyes also have to break in a new quarterback have to figure out the offensive line, and teams are going to be trying really hard to stop them. Either way, I believe Marvin Harrison Jr. is a generational talent, will be a top three pick in next year's draft, and will torch the college football world this year. Today we talked about his rise, and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. Hope to see you guys again soon, and until next time, peace.